A grim man of great strength, a fearless warrior with a temper to match, a man that would die standing upright and become one of the most legendary kings of Rohan, Helm Hammerhand. Hello friends, it's Carl here, and in today's episode we'll be discussing the story of Helm Hammerhand, an iconic figure in Rohan's history. So Helm Hammerhand was the son of Gram and the ninth king of Rohan, he was born in the year 2691 of the Third Age, and when he was 50 years old, his father died, and so Helm Hammerhand became king. During this period in Rohan's history, their lands were often raided by Dunlendings, who had even managed to occupy Isengard during the reign of Helm's grandfather, and no force could dislodge them from there. After Helm was crowned king, a man named Freka grew in power and riches and he occupied large areas of land on either side of the river Adorn, and near its source he built a mighty stronghold. He claimed to be a descendant from King Friewine, the fifth king of Rohan, and though he was a man of Rohan, many believed that he had done lending blood in him. Perhaps this heritage could be seen in his dark hair, which was rare for the blonde people of Rohan. Despite being one of Helmhammerhand's subjects, he did not show respect to his king, and he paid little attention to him, and when Helm would summon him to his councils, Freka would only attend when it pleased him. Needless to say, Helm mistrusted him. It was to one of these councils that Freka rode with many of his men, and he approached Helm Hammerhand, and proposed that Helm's daughter should marry Freka's son, called Wolf. This did not sit well with Helm, who responded, You have grown big since you were last here, but it is mostly fat, I guess. Which caused the hall to erupt with laughter, for Freka was indeed a fat man. I believe that beneath the superficial insult, there's a whole other layer to this jest. For when Helm says that Freka had grown big, I think it refers to his ego and self-importance. That after obtaining so much power and wealth, he had started considering himself Helm's equal, and worthy of merging his family with that of the royal line. Anyway, Helm's insult enraged Freka, who then subtly threatened him, by saying that old kings that refuse a staff that is offered to them may fall on their knees. Helm shrugged off this threat, and he told Freka that they would discuss the matter after the council was over, and later he approached him and told him that kings do not permit fights in their house, but men are freer outside. He then forced Freka to walk with him to a field outside of Edoras, and he ordered Freka's men to leave them be, for they were going to speak about a private matter alone. Since they saw that Helm's forces outnumbered them, Freka's men chose to obey the king's orders. Helm then turned onto Freka, and he told him, Now, Dunlending, you have only Helm to deal with, alone and unarmed. But you have said much already, and it is my turn to speak. Freka, your folly has grown with your belly. You talk of a staff. If Helm dislikes a crooked staff that is thrust on him, he breaks it. And with those words, he threw his fist at Freka, and so strong was the blow that Freka fell back, stunned, and died soon after. Helm then proclaimed that Freka's son, Wolf, and all of his near kin were enemies of Rohan, and he sent out some of his men to ride out to the west marches. As is often the case, vengeance breeds vengeance, and four years later an army of Easterlings attacked Rohan from the east, and the Dunlending saw that finally an opportunity had presented itself, and they crossed over the Isen and down from Isengard to form a great force led by Wolf, Freka's son. These Dunlendings were soon joined by enemies of Gondor that had landed in the mouths of the Lefnui and the Isen. Thus, Rohan was attacked both from the west and the east, being caught between the hammer and the anvil. Their force was unstoppable, and the Rohirrim were defeated and their lands overrun, and they were left to fight this threat alone, for their ally Gondor was being attacked by Corsairs. And so, Helm Hammerhand was driven back from the crossings of Isen, and he took refuge in the great fortress of the Hornburg, they were besieged by an army of Dunlendings, while Wolf led the force to Edoras, the capital of Rohan. Here they were met with some resistance, but it was futile, 
for all the defenders were slain, and Halet, Helm's eldest son, was the last to fall, right in front of the doors to the hall of Meduseld. Wolf then strode inside, and he sat on the throne of Meduseld and called himself king. We know that some of the Rohirrim that had fought against him were enslaved, and during his reign there would be great suffering and loss of life in Rohan. It would appear as if the weather itself felt the strife, for a terrible winter fell upon Rohan, and the lands were covered in snow, and both the Rohirrim and their foes suffered grievously, in the cold and from famine. This would be known as the Long Winter, and the defenders of the Hornburg grew desperate, and Helm's younger son, Hama, chose to lead some men outside and launch an attack on their enemies, despite Helm counseling him not to. This would be the last time Helm saw his son, for it is said that they were lost in the snow, and Helm Hammerhand was filled with grief. This grief fueled his ferocity, and he grew gaunt, and we're told that the dread of him alone was worth many men in the defense of the Burg. He would go out of the fortress by himself, clad in white, and would stalk his enemies like a snow troll, slaying men with his bare hands. Yet this was no sneak attack, nor some cowardly act, not for Helm Hammerhand. For before he went out to hunt his foes, he would blow upon a great horn, and its blast would echo throughout the deep, and a great fear would fall upon his enemies, who despite their numbers would choose to flee, rather than group up to capture or kill him. His ferocity and reputation became legendary, and it was believed that if he bore no weapon, then no weapon would bite him, and the Dunlending said that if he found no food, then he would feast on men. Whether there was any truth in this is uncertain, though this tale would last long in the land of Dunland. And yet, all legends must come to an end. And one night, men heard his horn blowing, but Helm Hammerhand did not return. In the morning, there came a sun gleam, the first that had been seen for a very long time, and the men of Rohan saw a white figure standing still, alone, dead as stone with its knees unbent. This was the body of Helm Hammerhand, the legendary king of Rohan that died standing. I believe that it's quite clear that he froze to death and so remained undefeated. Even in death, none of the Dunlendings had dared to approach him, and it is said that his horn could still be heard at times in the deep, and the wraith of Helm would walk among the foes of Rohan and kill men with fear. Eventually, Helm's nephew, Freyrlaf, would drive out Wolf with the aid of Gondor, though it would be many years till Rohan recovered, and it is another story altogether. Since both Helm and his two sons perished, the direct line of Rohan kings failed, and his nephew became king. The Hornburg and its surrounding defenses would forever be known as Helm's Deep, and Helm's body was brought to Edoras and buried in the Ninth Mound. It is said that upon this mound, the white flower of Rohan, the Simbelmine, grew thickly, so it seemed as if the mound was covered in snow. His horn would be kept in the Tower of the Hornburg, and during the Battle of Helm's Deep, it rang out at dawn's first light, and Tolkien says that all that heard that sound trembled. Many of the orcs cast themselves on their faces and covered their ears with their claws. Back from the deep, the echoes came, blast upon blast, as if on every cliff and hill a mighty herald stood. But on the walls men looked up, listening with wonder, for the echoes did not die. Ever the horn blasts wound on among the hills. Nearer now and louder they answered one to another blowing fierce and free. And with this mighty sound, the riders of Rohan charged out, shouting, Helm is arisen and comes back to war, Helm for Theoden King. Before ending this video, I'd like to point out that Helm's name, Hammerhand, was probably given to him due to his great strength and the use of his hands as weapons. I'd also like to hear your thoughts on his character. Was he one of the greatest kings of Rohan? Was it rash of him to slay Freka in the fields of Edoras? And do you believe the legendary tales told about him? Anyway friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I'd like to thank my viewers and patrons for your support. I really appreciate you all. 
If you can, leave a like, cause it helps this channel immensely. And subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.